What's up everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and if you watched the live streams, I did a complete playthrough of Jedi Survivor recently. About a week ago is when I wrapped up the game, and I've sort of been sitting on things, waiting to collect my thoughts so that I could do my review here. Now, I am fully ready to jump into the new Journey Plus, which gives me all of these options up above. But before we do that, I wanted to actually talk about the game and give my review of it and talk about, you know, is it worth it as part of my review series? Should I play this game? Is it actually worth it? Um, I think it is. Um, it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the game for my last save point, which is the point where we're ready to continue the adventure because I do wanna talk about a variety of things in this game in today's review. Now, if you've not watched one of my videos before on Jedi Survivor, I've done some guides, um, we've done the first impressions video, and of course, I streamed the entirety of this game um, on live streams. I think we did 13, something like 13 sessions, something like that, on the Xbox Series X. I did not play this on the PC, so I didn't have any performance issues at all. I played this on the quality mode, which is the maximum frame rate mode that you're gonna get. Um, streamed it to my PC with remote play and captured footage here with Streamlabs. Now you can catch all that footage over on my channel, so make sure to check that uh, over on my channel. We're on my channel. <laughs> anyway. Let's dive into the review. So I'm at the point now where I am ready to further explore the galaxy. Um, and we can go in here and for the most part, um, I have, um, it's not quite 100%, but I would argue that you can't really do 100% um, or it would be really difficult to do 100% on a single playthrough because there's a lot of things like earning all the perks um, and things of that nature that it would be better, you know, just to do a second playthrough and get things that way. Anyway, I got really close to exploring most of everything. I did 100% a couple of places, like um, Coruscant, I think 100%ed. Tantalor, I 100%ed. That was easy. <laughs> Nova Garan is 100%. Uh, Jedha is 91.9%. Coruscant's 100%. Uh, Koba is 91.4. And Shattered Moon is 98.4. The things I'm missing is as you get deeper into the game, um, you get all these optional things. Like if you look over here, we'll go ahead and run actually. Let's grab a um, little beating. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because there's stuff like this, there's these abilities that you get. Um, as you get later into the game. So, for example, using... These things right here. You know, these are things that you get later on in the game. So, um... Double jump, force push, and all that stuff. Maybe you'll be a um, friendly now. These are all things that you get later on in the game. And so, um, exploring all the planets is just a matter of going and getting all these green things on the map that you didn't necessarily get once you've unlocked all the abilities. For the most part, I've gotten most things across the planet. These maps are really, 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 really big, especially uh, the Kobo map. So, I would say... That if you took a straight comparison of Jedi Fallen Order versus Jedi Survivor, Jedi Survivor feels a lot bigger. I would, however, say that I don't know that it actually is in the sense that I got about 50 hours out of my first playthrough. My And, and I did a fairly, as you can see, I explored 90 plus percent of the planets. Um, I maxed out, I need to go find a meditation um, standpoint, a meditation place and I'll show you. Um, I maxed out most of my stuff, uh, but in terms of um, just sheer size, let's go back here. That may have been suicide. Ah! <laughs> How do I... 
Hey everyone, Ren Fail here with the uh, commercial part of the video where I say, hey, if you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. And thanks to all of our supporters are here on YouTube and over on Patreon, our highest members, our guild champions, crazy relative Remy D here on YouTube. And don't forget if you want to support, it's really easy. You can do the memberships below, the Adventurers Guild, three different tiers. There's also the super thanks on any uploaded video or YouTube short that you find. There's also, of course, the super chats and stickers that you could do on any live stream or premiere, and the Patreon page if you want to dive into the fantasy world that I have with my brother and my wife, which is a tabletop game, a point and click adventure game, and a fantasy book series. All are great ways to keep this channel going and me going full time. Thanks again for those of you who support. Let's get back to the video that you're watching now. Um, this is what I was wanting to talk about. Um, and in any case, what I was getting at before I got sidetracked was in terms of size you know I got about 50 hours out of my first playthrough of Jedi Fallen Order I got about 50 hours out of my first gameplay of Jedi Survivor so I think in terms of length they both felt around the same size uh, in terms of length however Jedi Survivor felt a lot bigger because of Kobo and the just sheer scope of that one planet because in the first game the planets were a little more linear and you, you did have to come back a couple of times as you got more additional abilities, but you didn't just have these big, huge, wide open spaces. And they do sort of have that same element in uh, this game where plants like Coruscant or the Shattered Moon are definitely a linear experience. And you will come back a couple of different times if you want to max out those planets with all of the abilities that you get in terms of exploring to different nooks and crannies to get all the cosmetic options and data points and so on and so forth. But Kobo is really just this massive wide open space that you can sort of fully explore. And it's a sort of a it's sort of dipping into open world territory without necessarily being an open world, which is very interesting. But what I wanted to talk about is in terms of size and, and scope and everything else. Um, you know, this is what I was talking about at the very beginning where I feel like in order to max out all this stuff, you need a second playthrough because um, obviously I could keep playing and grinding enemies and getting all of the like, you know, little things that I missed or the couple of challenges that I didn't complete. And I could probably get a few more of these abilities, but I maxed out quite a bit. Um, matter of fact, we could probably go ahead and do this right here while we're sitting here. Amplification, confused enemies, pull the mirror force and fire the weapon. Uh, confused, otherwise resistant humanoid enemies. Let's see that one. Yeah. So, uh, I maxed out the survival line. I maxed out three of the lightsaber stances. I went single, dual wield, and blaster, even though I never used blaster in my whole playthrough. Um, the only reason I did this is because when you're running around in your budget tauntaun and stuff... Um, you're shooting your blaster. It's like your default weapon once you get the blaster stance unlocked. So I kind of felt like it made sense to go ahead and max out the blaster just for that. I do not see a scenario where I will ever, ever use the cross guard stance, which is the Kylo Ren stance. Uh, it's slow as hell. It's like does a ton of damage, but I don't ever see me using that. The next playthrough, which is going to be my um, New Journey Plus, I'm going to uh, focus on double-bladed lightsaber and the single-bladed stance, probably. Um, I might go blaster and double-bladed just so I have a little bit of variation compared. But the cool thing is that when you do the New Game Plus, you get all your points refunded to you, and you can immediately spend those to get the stances that you want. So I'm just going to be able to roll into that as soon as I get into the game. So stay tuned for that, by the way, because I'm going to be doing the New Game Plus. I won't be streaming that, but I will be playing that for my own personal enjoyment and recording a lot of game footage around that, game guides and things of that nature. So stick around for those if you like my content here with um, Star Wars. Jedi Survivor. Um, so in terms of abilities, it felt much bigger than the first game because you do have quite a bit more. You start off with all of the abilities that you got from the first game, and then they just expand upon that with all of this stuff. Additional lightsaber stances, more force abilities. Um, I did max out the Jedi Concentration and Telekinesis first and foremost. I, didn't, I never used Confusion at all in the game. Um, I did start putting points into it because I had nowhere else to put points by the time I was winding up the gameplay, but I never used this. This is a, the confusion line is to like distract enemies and make them fight for you during combat, and I just never 
I never got into this. Now, I also played it on easy mode the first time through, which means I probably didn't need to. I, I would estimate that if you're doing this on a harder difficulty, this is going to be a big deal to be able to help you get through, um, you know, d difficult battles. Because there were some battles that had a lot of enemies coming at you, some really powerful enemies as well. So, um, the storyline was really, really good. Um, obviously, if you watch the live streams, uh, for the most part, you get to see all that stuff. Um, visually, it looked great. I, I mean, go. this is just... I mean, the game looks amazing, and it played really, really, really well. I think the combat was some of the best I've played in a long time. The puzzles got pretty challenging as you got deeper into the gameplay because you start getting all of these tools at your disposal in terms of the way you can jump, the force pull, the force push, uh, the grapple hooks, um, the you know being able to pull yourself up on the balloons, um, all these different ways that you can travel and traverse the verticality of the game and so the 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 puzzles were really well done um look at that blaster oh yeah also even though you never use the blaster if you let him stand around long enough he does pull it out and play with it don't tell mom um you know i gotta say that overall this was a really good experience i think for me it was another quintessential star wars experience and i said this about the first game i said if you strip out all the gameplay and just watch the cutscenes from jedi fallen order it's one of the best star wars movies you've ever seen i feel like this one was oh i've never seen this idol stance he pulled his lightsaber apart that was cool i've never seen that um anyway uh the storyline here was different you had companions joining you along some adventures here which was an interesting addition to the gameplay and for the most part, the story, there was a couple of moments where it was somewhat predictable, but it also had a lot of stuff that was really, really original. And um, the romance was really cool. I, I like that caveat of, of them throwing that in there. And it's not it's not bla it's not gratuitous. It's just, you know, yeah, he, he him and Marin. That's a cool thing. Like I freaked out when when they had the kiss moment and, and that was like, oh, my God, it's so good. It's like a justification because I played the first game three times through and I've already played this one once I can't wait to do my second playthrough and and that was really cool um, I liked all the characters that they brought to the table with this one um, I felt like for the most part there were a couple of story beats that I felt were the best in the game one is the opening sequence in Coruscant it's like two two and a half hours of gameplay in Coruscant where you're just it's Coruscant and it's so amazing that whole sequence is really really good and then there's the sequence later on when you're on Jetta and Vader shows up again and that's just like oh my god and that whole sequence is so intense followed by you're in tears because of what happens and and it's just like they it's like it's the it's the you know jab jab up you know jab jab uppercut sucker punch you know it was like they just hit you with a couple of jabs and then bam you know and then the story is just from there going towards the end the ending was the one thing that i felt a little a little weak the ending was a tiny bit weak and the reason i say this is because and this is just a personal criticism that they made the child way too mature in the sense that she just kind of like accepts that Marin and you know, she just accepts that her dad was a really bad guy and and you know Marin and and Cal are now her like surrogate parents and she just she just rolls with it she's like oh yay mom and dad woo I get to be a happy kid it's like that felt really weird to me and I'm not I still am not sure how I feel about that it, it felt off um, but for the most part I was very happy with the storyline. I would give this game... I would... Even though I nitpick that that ending, I nitpick the ending just a little bit. There's enough good stuff here that I'm still going to give this game a 10 out of 10. Visually, it's amazing. Story-wise, it's amazing. The voice acting is amazing. The motion capture in this game is leaps and beyonds beyond the first one. All of the cutscenes in this game... It's like watching a film in the theater. It's so, so well done. The combat was fast-paced, exciting. The puzzles were really fun. The landscapes. I mean, look at this stuff behind me. And this is just, you know, one boring planet out of all the places you can visit. So, for me, highly recommend this game. You absolutely should play it. Um, if you love Star Wars, this is everything Star Wars wants to be, should be, is, has been, 
it's the Star Wars of my childhood. It's the Star Wars of my adulthood. It's the Star Wars of my dreams. It made me extremely, extremely satisfied to play this game. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as I did. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Jedi Survivor. And of course, if you're going to be playing it, don't forget to share your footage and etc. in our Discord channel. May the Force be with you, everyone. See you in the next video.